about your notes if you haven't already. Um, we're going to be going to those in just a minute. We're talking about it's your serve. That's six, next six weeks. And you say, Pastor Bob, are you going to really preach on serving for six weeks? Um, so I hope that what will happen is as we begin to get better at serving, these chairs will fill up and we'll see people coming in because of the difference we're making or God's making in their lives through our lives every week during the week, right? Amen? Because we want God to use us. We don't want to just serve at church in some kind of job. We want to serve God each and every day. And so over the next six weeks, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be looking at all the different nuances in the scriptures about serving God. Now, why is that so important? Well, I would think that people would thank me for a lot of the sermons that I preached over the years, as I would hope that people will thank God for all the times he's used you in their lives when you spoke for him helping them see maybe an error in their ways or helping them see that, um, you know, giving them some encouragement when they needed it, some, you, you were actually God's arms of comfort in their lives and those kinds of things. Service is a whole lot more than just what's coming out of our mouth. Most of the service is actually what's happening as we come alongside people and they know that they're not alone and God reminds them that they, that they matter to him through the sacrifices we're willing to make as we join him in their lives. Those are a lot of things that, to think about, but I am thinking that when we get to heaven, that the thing people, the, the one thing that you will thank me for the most is this series right here. Because if you serve God the way he wants you to serve him in this earth, there is nothing that you can take with you when you stand before him that will bring him more joy than the times you served him down here. The times you said, yes, Lord, and you said what he wanted you to say. You said, yes, Lord, and you did what he wanted you to do. Listen, service has nothing to do with what I want and everything to do with the one I'm serving and what he wants. Would you agree? I mean, it's not even service when I'm only doing what I want. And hopefully over the next six weeks, we'll get a better view of what service is to the point where we're actually serving God better and we are serving him more often, and we are reaping the rewards and the benefits of that because there are the greatest rewards in the kingdom of God are reserved for those who serve God. Do you believe that? Okay, they're not reserved for people who believe all the right things about God. They're reserved for the people who serve God, which, by the way, if they're not serving God, they don't believe all the right things about God. If you believe all that God's word has to say and you're not serving God, then you don't believe all that God's word has to say because it's all about serving him from start to finish. Was Abraham just supposed to be a rich guy that he wanted to make or was he supposed to serve God? Was he supposed to raise up his family as a family that loved God and worshiped God and served God? The Israelites, were they freed from captivity to go do whatever they want or were they freed from captivity to go and to serve God? You know, now let's take it to uh, the Christian church 2,000 years ago. Did Jesus die so that we could just go to heaven? Or he, did he die so that for the very first time we could truly serve God with God being the source of our power and the knowledge that, that we have, knowing what he's doing in our lives and around us to the point where we're able to actually join him. That's why we were saved. We were saved to serve. But the problem is most of us don't. Okay, but I'm hoping today a couple of things will happen. Number one, you'll, you'll see that a lot of the serving that you're doing towards God and joining God, you actually are. You actually are serving God. You just have never had anybody explain it to you to where you really knew, oh, that was something that God did through me because I really didn't want to do it, but God spoke to my heart and I knew he wanted me to do it and I did it. And listen to me, it has nothing to do with what, how people received it. Can you serve God and they still put you on a cross? Yeah, I think Jesus showed us that. Can you serve God and even the people around you um, work against you? Everybody in the Bible who served God, the people that were closest to them, eventually many of them turned against them. Amen? Here's what the difference is, though, for the ones that we, that we remember. The ones that we remember continue to serve God even when the results are not good. Even when I might lose a friendship over it in order to correct a brother that God wants me to correct or a sister. So today what we're going to start with, we're going to start in this whole series with reporting for duty. And so to give you an idea of what we're talking about, 
Um, I was 19 years old, and I wanted to get married, and uh, it was January, and I, and my wife was to be, was going to be possibly leaving and going overseas with her parents, and um, uh, I decided, and we decided that we didn't want to be separated from that decision, so we decided we wanted to get married. So I asked her to marry me, asked for permission to marry her. Um, we got married on August 3rd, and we, I went in the Air Force on August 29th. So I wanted to put myself in a position where I could take care of my new family. And so that was my plan. That was what I wanted to do, and that is the choice that I made. What I had to do in order to, in my mind, in order to take care of my family, that's what I wanted to do, um, I needed to actually sign up to serve my country. And that means I had to give up everything I was used to. You know, I was used to wearing long hair. I was used to going to work and going to school, going to work. If I didn't want to go to work, then I'd, you know, not go to work and try to work that work, work around it. You know, in the military, you don't get to do that. If you're sick, it's, you don't get sick leave, and then you go to work sick. And then if you're sick enough, they'll put you in, the, in, in some uh, hospital bed somewhere. And if you're not, guess what? They'll hand you your rifle and say, let's march. All right? That's, anybody in the, else in the military besides me? Calling in sick? Does that happen? No. It doesn't happen. All right? A whole lot of other things. And so today, I want you to think in terms of that when, when I'm speaking to you about reporting for duty in the kingdom of God. Okay? Can I just say most Christians that are in the military will follow orders there a whole lot more than they will follow orders in the kingdom of God. Because the ramifications for not following orders in the military can be very severe, right? But in the kingdom of God, God doesn't punish us just because we say, no, not available. He's patient because love is patient. He's kind because love is kind. And he is working in us and he's waiting for us to get to a point, as we'll see today, that we can actually serve him. So today, it all starts with reporting for duty. If I'd have never reported for duty, I would have never been in the Air Force. I wouldn't have gotten my paycheck. I would have kept my freedom you know, all those other things, but I had to report, or I didn't have to, I chose to report, because I wanted all that the Air Force could offer me, and I was willing to take the loss of some of my freedom in order to get those things, because I cared more about raising a family than I cared about my freedom, okay? So that's kind of what it is. So the question that, that maybe one of the things that we got to think about today, I don't know where you're at in your service to God, maybe that's exactly what's going on in your life. You're just not ready yet to give up your freedom in order to serve God. Because you have to. In other words, when Jesus, he had a freedom to go to a cross, did he not? And he had a freedom not to, did he not? And he prayed three times, Father, if there's any other way, show me. And, and you know, let's go that route. But instead, and he went on to say, but not my will, your will be done. And then he eventually went to the cross because his father strengthened him. And gave him the ability to serve him the way he wanted him to serve him. This is true for all of you and all of me who belong to the Lord. But we have to report for duty. And that starts with a decision. In Joshua 24, 15 on your notes, Joshua has been leading the people of Israel and into the promised land. And it's not easy to do what God is asking you to do. It wasn't easy for them. They were taking over people's lands and people's lands. They didn't want to give up their lands. And it was very difficult for them. And he could see that they were intermingling with the people that they were supposed to be conquering and not intermingling with. And they were beginning to follow other gods and those kinds of things. And Joshua says to them in Joshua 24, 15, decide today whom you will serve. Circle that word. Everyone in the Bible that is in somehow, some way commended by God is commended for their service their willingness to serve God in the moment, okay? Decide today whom you will serve. And by the way, make this decision every day. As for me and my family, or my family and me, we will serve the Lord. It starts with this decision. 
I know a lot of people get saved without making this decision. A lot of people get saved because we don't want to die and go to hell. We can sense God's spirit in us. We can sense his conviction. And the Bible says the spirit convicts us of our sin. The reason he does that is to let us know that we are separated from God by that sin, not to tell us that we're bad people. We know that we're not perfect people. God knows that we're not perfect people. The Holy Spirit doesn't convict us to tell us something we already know. The Holy Spirit convicts us, letting us know that because we're not perfect, we can't be as close to God as God wants us to be because of our sin. That's why the Spirit convicts us. People convict us because they want us to join their church or, or get, you know, they're trying to chalk up baptisms or whatever. Listen to me. Stay away from people like that. The reason God's Spirit convicts us of our sin is one reason and one reason only so that we, that we can know why we can't get close to God. That's it. And then he convicts us not only of our sin, but of our need for righteousness. In other words, he puts it in us, this desire to not be separated, but to be right with God. To be in a right relationship with God, which we don't even know how we can. And every church is more than willing to tell us how. And all of our Christian family members are willing to tell us how. But nobody can be in a right relationship with God when God isn't the one speaking to the person. And God isn't the one making it possible for us to be right with him. And so he says, Bob, you need to be right with me. And he starts to put in this hunger for him. And this hunger for him leads to Jesus because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so as we'll see today, he uses his son and he calls us and he draws us to Jesus so that we can come to know him and be one with him and be close to him. So the, the spirit is convicting us of our sin so that we can know that we are separated from God and can't be right with God by anything we do. Our need for righteousness, so he puts his hunger for, for, for a desire to be right with him. And then also the coming judgment, that if we don't get right with him, we will be judged for those sins that separate us from him. And so he does all of this so that the church, us, we can speak to the gospel. We can speak to the good news. See, because the Spirit's got you ready and has got you convinced, maybe he hasn't, but he got me convinced when I was nine, that, that your sin separates you from God and that your need for righteousness is real. You want to be right with God. And that if you're not right with God, you will pay a penalty for your choices one day. That's all so that the church can share the good news with you that Jesus died for your sins and took the full and complete penalty of your sins on him if you will accept him and what he has done for you and receive him into your life in so doing, receiving God into your life and then you will become a child of God and you can now begin to serve him. Right? Not... Say a prayer so you can go to heaven when you die. Not believe a certain set of facts so that you can go to heaven when you die, but to have my relationship with God restored because Jesus has saved me. So we're going to look today at reporting for duty. Five things that I need to know before I can even report for duty. Each and every day. These you know, we're going to look at things you have to do initially, but then we're going to have to look at things that you have to do every single day if I'm going to report for duty. But first, the first thing we're going to look at is who can report, okay? So on your notes, who can report? Those who have passed the spiritual. Those who have passed the spiritual. Now, I went to my recruiter, I signed up, and I was ready for duty. I was ready to go. And what did he say I had to do first? Pass a physical. I had to pass a physical. In the kingdom of God, if you're going to serve God, before you can serve God, you can report to duty all you want to, but if you're not a child of God, you're not reporting for duty. Ever. You can't. Why? Because the man without the spirit can't accept what comes from the spirit of God because it's foolishness to him and he does not understand it. And so I have to pass the spiritual. So in a, in, a, in a military, it's a physical requirement, and I'm giving my time and my energy and my life to, to, the, to the military for the purpose of serving my country. In the kingdom of God, I'm giving myself to Jesus for the purpose of serving God. And I must pass the spiritual. 
Ephesians 2.10 says it this way. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew. Circle that word. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Circle the word in. This new person that I am is that I am now in Christ Jesus. I don't just know that he died for me, but I have accepted it and I have received him into myself and I, now I am in him. All right? We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Okay, so that last part of the sentence, so that we can do the good things we, he planned for us long ago, said another way is so that we can serve God. Not the things we plan today to do for God, but the things that God planned for us to do long ago before we even came to know him. So we were saved to serve God, and if I'm not saved, I haven't passed the spiritual yet. And I can't serve God until Christ makes me, he creates me anew. Now, the Air Force did a pretty good job of being, turning me into somebody I wasn't in eight weeks. I imagine the Marines do an even better job when they turn somebody into somebody they weren't, however many weeks their boot camp was. How long was your boot camp, Dad? 12 weeks. Takes four weeks longer to make a Marine than an Air Force guy, just so you know. <laughs> but God does it like that. Everything I need to serve God happens the minute I'm saved. When he puts his spirit in me, I just have to be ready to report for duty. I have to be willing to to report for duty. So it all starts with me knowing, hey, I'm saved. Yeah, I'm going to heaven when I die, but there's a lot of stuff God and I are going to do between now and then because I was saved to serve God. I'm not apologizing for this, guys, because I know that those of you who serve God will be standing next to those who do not. And they're just as saved as you are. And it's not going to make God happy, it's not going to make you happy, and it's not going to make them happy that no one taught them that they were saved to serve. That's like being told that you were, you were married to just go do your own thing instead of to serve your wife or serve your husband and do life together. Nobody told me that. I thought I was just supposed to, you were just supposed to shack up together and we didn't have to do life together. She didn't have to become my best friend. I could have other friends that were closer to me than that. It's like, yeah, and there's some people who do marriage like that. And by the way, you don't want to do that. Jesus is your best friend, and he will make your spouse your best friend if you'll let him. But before he does that, he'll make you the best friend your spouse ever had. Because the love that he will pour into you for your spouse far exceeds the love he will pour into anyone else for your spouse and God is love, and nobody can match the love that he pours into someone. Amen? Amen? So before he makes anybody your best friend, he'll make you theirs. He'll teach you how to love even your enemy if you let him. But you got to be willing to report for duty. Okay? But know this. If you're saved, you can. I don't care. I was nine years old when I got saved. And from the time I was nine to the time I was 35, I could have reported for duty. I just never did. And part of it was I didn't know I could, but the biggest part of it is I could sense the pull. I just didn't want to go there because unlike the Air Force, God wasn't making me show up for work every day, All right? Number two, and this is very important, who do I report to, right? I report to Jesus. Write that down. You do not report to your pastor, now, if you're serving in a ministry that your pastor oversees, you might report to your pastor. But if your pastor is the pastor God wants you to have, he wants you reporting to Jesus. Amen. And he wants you submitting to his authority because you're serving Jesus. Not because if you don't, you'll lose your job. Nobody benefits from that. The people that you're ministering to don't benefit from that. You don't benefit from that. And God's kingdom does not benefit from that. So if you are serving, even if you're a slave in the scriptures, you're to serve that master so well that they're praising God that they have you as a slave. In other words, you're supposed to be the reason they want more slaves. That's a weird way to look at it. You say, well, how can I do that? Why? Because 
if you're a slave and you can't get out of it, the way that you serve God are the eternal things that are gonna, you're going to be rewarded for in heaven. But the question is, am I going to do that if I'm reporting to Jesus, I will. In John 12, 26, Jesus said, if anyone, if any of you wants to serve me, then follow me. Circle the word wants. It's a big if. Everyone in this room, if you don't want to serve Jesus, nothing that I say today is going to be of good news to you. It isn't. I don't want to preach it to you, and you don't want to hear it if you don't want to serve Jesus. However, there is a possibility that if you're one of those people that don't want to turn, maybe you served him in a church somewhere else and you got burned and you got hurt and you don't ever want to serve him again like that. But what if he wants you to? And I'm hoping that today you'll change your mind. And I'm hoping today he'll show you how. I tell you what, if I think, believe this, if you take all the people who have served God in this world, in this country right here, in the churches in this country, who are not serving them now because they got, quote unquote, burned out or burned by somebody in church, and they started serving, all started serving God the way they did when they first started, this church in America would look totally different. Forget talking new Christians into serving, which is where you get your greatest success, is growing new Christians who are, haven't been burned yet to a point where they're willing to report for duty, and therefore they're the only ones that can serve God because they report to Jesus. Instead, you've got people that are coming and just going through the motions because the reason they're serving has nothing to do with wanting to, and everything to do with, well, that's what I do, and that's what I'm supposed to do, and that's what I've always done, and that's what I always will do. But look what he says. If any of you wants to serve me, circle me. I don't care what you're doing. If you're teaching children in the children's ministry, you're serving Jesus in this church. If you're not, get out of the job and let someone who wants to serve Jesus work with our children. Okay? I just want you to know that I am not, not, not in this series trying to get one person to do one thing except serve Jesus. Report to Jesus. Why should it be any different for anything else in the kingdom of God? Why should the people working with our children not be people who are serving Jesus? Why should the people who are greeting people coming through the door not be doing it because they're serving Jesus? Why should the people taking care of their families at home every day doing it for any other reason than doing it because they serve Jesus. Why would, in the kingdom of God, why would that be preferable, any other way be preferable to me joining Jesus in the life of my children, me joining Jesus in the life of my spouse, right? If any of you wants to serve me, and here it is, then follow me. Do not ever apologize for following Jesus. You're talking to someone that doesn't if you have to apologize for it. Instead of apologizing, help them see that they can. Because they become convinced that they can't. They've grown up in a religion where no one does. Or they have a bunch of Christian friends around them that don't follow Jesus, but sure do know the rules. And know how to hide it when they break them. And know how to make other people feel bad when they break them. And know how to lift themselves up when nobody knows the wrong that they've done. This is all junk and has nothing to do with serving God. Okay? I report to Jesus. That means if I was doing something wrong, when I report to Jesus, we're going to deal with that. But when I report to my job or to the pastor, the only one that knows that I'm not right with Jesus is me. And I just go ahead and do my ministry anyway. I go ahead and do that. I'm not fooling God, and whoever I'm ministering to is not being ministered by God. They're just watching me do the best I can do while I don't serve God and serve for whatever other reason I'm serving. Because if I'm doing anything, that, and I'm calling it serving God, and I'm reporting to Jesus, the first thing he's going to do with, if I report after not come showing up to work in the military... And I and the roll call starts, and there I am with my uniform all pressed and ready to go, and I'm just sitting there waiting for him to just be so glad that I'm there, right? That's he should be. The fact that I wasn't there yesterday shouldn't matter, right? I'm there now, right? He should be appreciating it. How many of you know that that sergeant isn't going to sit there and pretend like I didn't show up or that I did show up when I didn't the day before? 
the first thing he's going to address is you're AWOL, get out of that rank and go, we're going to deal with what we do when people are AWOL, right? You have taken yourself out of the ability to be a part of this unit until we have dealt with what you did, your choices were yesterday. And when I report to Jesus to serve Jesus, and I don't think he does that, who am I kidding? I'm just not really reporting to Jesus. I'm reporting to my ministry. And I'm reporting to the other people. Because if I'm reporting to Jesus and I was treating my wife badly, believe me, he has something to say about that before I minister in the church. So I'm trying to get you to see that these aren't just things I know in my head. These are things that are so necessary that if I don't do them, I can't serve God. Which means when I stand before God, all those good things that I did and I'm, expected to get, I'm expecting to get rewarded for, at least acknowledged by God, they're not even there to be acknowledged. Because it wasn't God doing those things through me. It was do, me doing those things without letting Christ be Lord. Right? So I report to Jesus says, if anyone wants to serve me, then follow me. Then, circle that word, because what's next is important. You'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. Honestly, some of us walked in here today, and we think we're better than some of the other people that are here. Others of us walked in today, thought that the reason that we're here today is to figure out whether they're better than us or not. Other of us walked in here today feeling like we're not as good as the people that are around us today and that in, in, they're supposed to make me feel like that's okay. But I hope one day you'll walk into your church with a heart to serve God. And that before you walk through those doors, you've already reported to him. And he's already dealt with anything he needs to do that's going to prevent you from showing his love to everybody that's in this room. I can walk into any church in America on any Sunday and serve God. Amen. Because I don't have to preach to serve God. I just have to let God serve. Amen. All right? Romans 12, 11, never give up, eagerly follow the Holy Spirit and serve the Lord. Does that sound like we're supposed to be always serving God? But doesn't it also look like we're supposed to be letting God lead? All right? What's our part? We just never give up. What do you never give up? We never give up following the Holy Spirit. We never give up serving the Lord. So the reason that some of us aren't serving is simply because we haven't reported for duty. Maybe it's because we haven't passed the spiritual yet. We're not saved. And there's no one to report to. He's waiting for us to marry him, to commit our lives to him, to give ourselves to him. Or maybe we're just not reporting to him. We're just looking at doing church and doing Christianity. But what we want to do is we want to report to him. Number three then becomes important. When do I report? Okay. When do I? Who do I? Who can report? Those of us who are saved. Those of us who have passed the spiritual. Who do I report to? I report to Jesus. When do I report to Jesus? The first one is I report, or the only one is, I report when I want to. I report when I want to. How many of you are in the military? Been in the military. Could you report when you wanted to? No. And that's why, and I remember I said, made that statement, some people, some Christians are more, they report more often and more, you know, they're, they're more faithful to their obligations to serve in the military than they are to serve in the kingdom of God. Because if you don't, everything changes immediately in the military. And when you don't in the kingdom of God, you have a loving God who loves you and is waiting patiently for you to come around to a point where you want to. The military makes you change what you do. God wants, you to, wants to change that you want to do it. That you want to do it. Right? Isn't that what was going on with Jesus the night before he was died? God was working in him to help him both will and to act according to his good purpose because Jesus said three times, it's not my will to act according to your good purpose, but not my will, your will be done. Did he come to a point where he want to, wanted to or did he come to a point where he was willing to? And that's a fine line, nobody really knows, but it's all the same thing in the end, is it not? 
Yeah, I want to because I want to do what God wants me to do more than I want to do what I want to do, and that's the reason I want to. But I still don't want to. How many of you want, knew that God wanted you and wants you to not only forgive your enemies, but want to forgive your enemies? Absolutely. But you might have to do it a few times only because you know God wants you to until you start seeing the changes he makes in you. And then you'll start becoming more and more like him, and you will actually just want to do it because you don't want to harbor any grudges and, and you don't want your heart, and you don't want to separate from God. So I found that, that my wanting to be close to Jesus is the only thing that really, truly overtakes me wanting anything else when I don't want to do what God wants me to do. I've got to want Jesus and not want to be separated from him. John 3, 6, 37, Jesus said, Every person the Father gives me eventually, circle that word, eventually comes to me, comes running to me, by the way, if you haven't done that yet, I just want you to know it took me 24 years, 26 years. I was saved when I was nine, and I came running to him when I was 35. But I eventually came running to him. He was with me every minute of every day in all those days, but I did not serve him. I did not come running to him. But when I was 35, I chose to do that. So I, I can tell you from my own experience, if you choose to do that, not play games with him, but truly choose to run to him, to follow him, to walk with him, he, this, the things that, that you're going to hear right now, you will experience because I experience them every day. Every person the Father gives me eventually comes running to me, and once that person is with me, I hold on and don't let go. doesn't mean they hold on, but he holds on, and he won't let go. So if you're one of those who are not serving anymore, he has not let go of you. And that's why he's right now telling you the things he wants you to know. I don't know what those things are. You do, though. And I'm here to encourage you to come home and start serving, to report for duty, to say, you know what? I'm going to report today, Lord, because I want to. I think a church is better off with people who are reporting for duty who want to than reporting for duty because it's their turn to serve. Don't you? And so does Jesus. And so that's why he doesn't quit on us. Even when we don't want to, he wants to bring us back to himself. Remember, we repeat, right? I don't have to repeat getting saved. I'm spiritually fit. If I'm saved, I can come back at any time I want to. I can report to duty any time I what? want to. This, part, this point right here. I don't care if I've been serving God faithfully for 35 years and you've been messing around for the last 10, making everybody around you miserable, and you come home and you want to start serving him tomorrow and I get too busy with football or whatever my favorite pastime might be, only one of us will be serving God tomorrow and it won't be the one who's preoccupied with this world. It's not fair. I've served so faithfully so many years. Why? And God's not using me anymore, but he's using that person who's been fooling around for the last 10, not doing anything. Yeah. Well, if you were still reporting for duty, you would be praising God for the one who came home, not whining and moaning that they did and that God's using them. Cain, brother of the prodigal son. I hope you know the Bible's enough to know what I'm talking about. If you don't, Call me up, text me, we'll go over those. Those are really good stories. But look what he says in verse 44, John chapter 6. Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me makes them want to come. God isn't going to make you want to do a message, I mean, to do a, be a preacher. You may want you to do, be a preacher. Your mom might want you to be a preacher. But God wants you to come to Jesus, buddy. And if you haven't got that figured out, keep your mouth shut. Does it sound like I met God? It's not about being the head of the, this department or this or that. It's about coming to Jesus. Look what he says again. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me makes them want to come. But if they do come, I will raise them to the last day. Do you know how many people are saying, I'm not reporting for duty and I still expect you to raise me on the last day? I don't know about you. But I understand this verse enough to know I want God to want me to come to Jesus Amen. every day because I want to be raised on the last day. Don't you? 
You can't show me in the Bible where it says, if you'll believe in me, I'll take you to heaven. If you'll believe that I exist, if you'll believe that I died on a cross for you. But I can show you verses like this, that if he's my Lord and he has put his spirit in me, no matter whether I do anything right after that or not, I'm still saved and I'll be in heaven with him forever. But I wasn't saved to just wait for that day. I was saved to serve. And I just need to report to Jesus and I need to want to. In other words, God, you're working in me to both want to and to do the things that you want me to. You want to give me the power to do them? You want to give me the desire to do them? So, Lord, I need you to do your part. I don't need to talk myself into signing up for something. But, Lord, I want to respond. I want to react to you. So draw me to you and then show me how you want to use me. Okay? Not so that I can approve it or disapprove it, so that I can get started. And I can go talk to the one person in the world, and there is always one person in the world who is most likely to help me say yes to you. So if he's wanting you to serve with children, you'll go talk to somebody that you know he's already shown you working with children. Talk to the person that's watching yours when you pick them up. Say, I don't know what I need to do, but I know God wants me to work with children. I want to do what you're doing. I want to say yes to God, and I want to report for duty. Well, I just need to go to the pastor because he'll tell me, no, you don't. No, you don't. I mean, I'll certainly help you, but you don't report to me. Who do you report to? Jesus. And he'll tell you who to go to that is most likely going to help you say, yes, Lord. Do you believe that? If you go to Jesus and he points you to a person, isn't it going to be the person that is most likely to help you say, yes, Lord? Absolutely. It isn't going to be the person that takes his place in your life. It's going to be the person that's going to get you to not let anybody take his place in your life and to keep coming to him but i gotta want to but the good news is did you not see in all these verses there are that many but did you not see that god actually helps us want to absolutely so don't sit there and whine because you're not doing anything whine because he's not doing anything god i'm not supposed to want to until you help me want to so help me but be ready sometimes it takes a very difficult situation to get a person to a point where they actually want to serve God. Right? Then number four, where do I report? Where do I report? I report when I want to, and I report where I am. So if you're at home, something's going on at home, and all of a sudden you sense God wants you to serve your spouse or your children... He's probably going to have you say, he's probably going to come more across like, I want you to serve me, and this is what I want you to do for your child. I want you to serve me, and this is what I want you to do for your spouse. Um, it might be something like, I want you to stop demanding your own way and start loving your spouse. And then he's going to give you the help to do it. Or you can go, oh, I'm a good Christian. Bob said I'm not supposed to yell at my, my spouse, so I'm going to try really hard not to yell at my spouse right now. And that'll work until the next thing that comes out of your spouse's mouth comes out of their, and then that's gone. And guess who didn't follow you home? Me, right? You can toss the sermon out. You can toss the rules out. But who said he wouldn't let go of you and wouldn't stop holding on to you? You can't toss Jesus out. So report to Jesus in that moment, right? Because you want to report to Jesus. And do it right there where you're at. Do you know where you can never serve Jesus? Where you plan to serve Jesus. While you're planning it. Okay? Fifth, I got five Sundays this month, so a bunch of us go out to the place that feeds the homeless out in Loveland on the fifth sun, if there's a fifth Sunday in a month. And so I'm, I'm planning on going and serving God by serving the homeless in that and working with people in the church. I always love doing that. Have I served God? No. The only way that, that I will get any credit for serving God is not by planning on doing it, but by actually showing up that day and doing it. Would you agree? I have to actually be there. And here's how we work in the other direction. Oh, I used to do, I'd, I've done this for 20 years. I've done this for 30 years. It's someone else's turn. Really, Moses. How many days do you think he felt like saying that? right? 
I can't serve God today if I'm somehow thinking about how I served him yesterday and then calling that good. Do you see how foolish that is? So this point that I'm making is this. If you're not serving God now, what makes you think you're going to serve him yesterday? And if you're not serving God now, did you really serve him yesterday? Right? So think about that. And think about this, that I am going to serve God where I am. 2 Peter 3.11, you should serve and honor God by the way you live. Not just, it doesn't say by the job you have at church, does it? It says we should serve and honor God by the way that we live. It should be a lifestyle of serving God. But what about serving at church? Is that important to God? The answer is absolutely yes. Which one of your kids do you not want to serve in your family? Which one of your kids, if you got four kids, you want the other three serving and that one won't serve back? I mean, isn't that what you're always going to be dealing with? This selfish attitude of this one who wants to be served instead of being able to deal with what you really want to deal with, a heart that loves God, loves his brothers and sisters in the family and is willing to serve them, serve God in their lives. You know, parents, we really do need to do a better job of teaching our kids to serve God in our homes, but the problem is we need to do better at showing them how. When we go to church and we smile at people and then we go home and we cut them down in front of our kids, we are teaching our kids to hate God's people. So don't do it. But don't do it because I just gave you a rule. Find Jesus in that moment. Want Jesus in that moment and show your kids how when people you love hurt you, that you still love them because you turn to Jesus. And you draw on his love for them. And then I can go into my church and I report to my church. Where do I report? I report wherever I am and I report to my church. I am supposed to serve God in my church. No exceptions. Do you want to be the only child in heaven that did not serve God in his family? By the way, there are going to be many. We have to build not on what people build on. In other words, they serve for their own self-righteousness. That's not going to heaven. But those who reported to Jesus and those who reported when they wanted to and they wanted to and so they did. And when they reported where they were and then they served God the way he wanted them to serve in the church. That's how the apostles and that's how Christ served. Jesus said, I can do nothing on my own. I can only do what I see my father doing. And the same is true for us in our service. God wants to be the one leading the way. But listen to me. He wants you working in his church. He wants you using your gifts to make your family strong. When I say strong, helping us look more and more like Christ to the community, to the people around us. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, Christ chose some of us to be apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers so that his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. And the way that I teach you to serve here at Grace, we teach you to, it's not just me, we have other teachers here. We don't have any apostles here, but we do have evangelists. Um, and we're here to teach you to serve God's people. We're here to serve, what, here to teach you. And the way that we teach you to do that is to help you report for duty. But we can't make you ready for duty, but we can help you when you do. We can help you and encourage you to be ready to do it. We can, we can encourage you to do it, to report to Jesus, not to us, not try to be a replacement for Jesus in your life. We can get you to report to him and do the things that he is putting in you, the desire to do, and then do it purposefully. I wanted to help people find Jesus and follow Jesus. I thought the way to do that was just share the gospel. God said the way to do that is you're going to be a pastor of a church and you're going to teach others to do that too. It took me years to figure that out, but I figured it out. Because my, my, my approach towards all of this is this. One yes, Lord, at a time, and as long as I know it's you, God, the answer is yes. No more no's, no more waiting. I did that for 20 years, and I'm not, I had no desire to do it anymore. If you don't see me moving, it's because I don't see God moving. And I'm waiting. Because as a pastor, if I start moving, others will start moving that way. 
and I have to wait till I see God moving. So you come to me with the greatest idea in the world, and you don't see me moving, it's because I don't see God in it yet. Now, if you want me to get the rest of the church moving in that direction, and I don't see God moving, what kind of pastor would I be to those people? But listen to me. If you see God moving, you can start moving, and you can start sharing with everybody in this church what God is doing, and they all get to choose for themselves whether they go with you or not. And guess who It doesn't even need to be involved with anything that God is doing in this church? Anyone he isn't inviting. And then I don't have to do things because you see them, and you don't have to do things because I see them, because you report to Jesus, I report to Jesus, but we know that he wants to use us to help each other say yes, Lord. Amen. Find Jesus in our circumstances. Follow Jesus in our circumstances. I report to my church so that his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. Do you think the body will grow strong if you don't serve? It will grow strong, but not because of you. It will grow strong in spite of you. But do you think God wants it to grow strong because of you? Listen to me. Your pastors know that, and we believe that. And we'll never look down on you if you don't. But we want you serving. But we want you doing the things that God wants you to do. And those are the things that you see God in. Okay? We want you to do it the way that we do it. Because the way that we do it doesn't require people. It just requires God. And then a willingness to say yes. So how do I report? And this is the most important thing. If you're not reporting, you're not doing these two things. The first thing is this. I let go of everything. I let go of everything. Philippians 3, 8, and 9. Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Circle the word Lord. That means I, this is the man, this is the God, this is the one I serve. He's my Lord. That's what that means, right? Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have given up, every, given up everything else and counted all as garbage. All I want is Christ and to know that I belong to him. If you are serving Jesus, you get Jesus and you know you belong to him. These are the, these, this is the reward for serving Jesus. Not praise from pastors or recognition ceremonies at the church. That's why we don't do them. Because if you're doing them so that we can all applaud you, we don't want you doing them if that's the reason you're doing them. Well, if, they, we, don't, if we don't do that, nobody will serve. Again, our church is much better off with people who are serving because they want to be with Jesus and walk with Jesus than we will ever be with people who are serving so that we'll do a ceremony and point out how wonderful they are. Amen. It's about you. It's not about them. God wants to minister to you, and he wants to use you to minister to you. He doesn't want pastors to minister to you. He wants us to equip you to minister to each other. And today you have all that you need to serve here at Grace. If you have passed the spiritual, and you belong to Jesus. If you know that you're reporting to him, you know what he wants you to do, and you are ready to join him and do what he's saying, and, and just join him in everything, right? Because we want to remain in him, and he needs to remain in us. Otherwise, what we do will not bear fruit. So we want to remain in him. We want to do it where we are. And then we want to find a place in the church where we can do it so that people can know if they need that kind of help, they can come to me for it, right? And then I got to let go of everything in order to do that because God for sure is going to have them call right when I want to do something else. For sure. You don't, I, I've never met anybody that's really truly given themselves to God that within the first week they didn't get that figured out. God, you're supposed to wait till I have free time to have these people call me. You have to wait till I don't have other uses for this money before you ask me for this money. You have to wait till you know, I have some time off from work before you, somebody calls me and says, can you come over right now? And God says, will you give up your job to, do, to say yes to me? Will you give up everything in order to say yes to me? It's, listen, there is no way around this. If you don't have this heart, you can't serve God. Why? Nothing, I mean, um, Luke 9, 14, 33. In the same way, you must give up everything you have 
to be my follower. And that plays out one moment at a time. Galatians 1.10 says, Am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So I must give up everything and everyone. You might want to add that. Who is the one person that when Jesus says go left, can talk you into going right? That is the most dangerous person in your life if you want to be a servant of God. And they're not a danger like they're going to hurt you. But you're going to stand before God one day and they're the reason that you're not getting rewarded. And it's going to break their heart if they can see that. I'm hoping that we can. But we all must give an account to God when we stand before him. We're not going for judgment. He's already saved us. But we must give an account when we go before the Lord. I want you to stand before him as servants of God, and I want him saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I think that is the day that we're supposed to get credit for anything God does through us on this life. And guess what we're still not getting credit for? Anything we did on our own. Right. So I must give up everything, and then I must give God all of me. That's the second thing. In the moment. By the way, this will play out before the day is over. If you want to serve God in the next argument with you, that you're in with somebody, you're going to have to give up everything in that moment to serve God, and you're going to have to give yourself completely to God to let go of all it is that's causing you to continue to fight for what you think you need to fight for. Because if you're not fighting for the Lord, then you're fighting for the wrong thing. And if you're fighting for the Lord but not loving the person you're fighting with, you've missed God. Romans 12, 1, dear friends, God is good, so I beg you to offer your bodies to him as a living sacrifice, pure and pleasing. That's the most sensible way to serve God, Amen. by giving yourself completely to him. Romans 6, 19, you must make every part of your body serve God so that you will belong completely to him. Since we have the spirit, let us let the spirit lead in every area of our lives. Why? Because the spirit is always going to use us in this world to, as an instrument in God's hand to bring God glory. And it brings God glory when we love our enemies. And it brings God's glory when we don't hold grudges. And it brings God's glory when his spirit you know, replaces bitterness with love, joy, and peace, and patience. It brings God glory. In my own life, every time God has, has brought me anything from him, I, th I praise him, and I thank him for him. It brings him glory. Amen. Romans, I mean, Luke 14, 26, Jesus said, If anyone comes to me but loves his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, or sisters, or even life more than me, he cannot be my follower, which means I cannot serve God because anything I do apart from Jesus is nothing. It is not worth doing. It may be beneficial to me and to others in the moment, but a hundred years from now, it absolutely will not matter. And every good thing I've ever done apart from Christ, I could have done a much better job of if I'd have stayed in Christ. And I would have served him instead of serving the people or serving myself. So what do I want from all this? Why, what, where are we going with all this? Today, I just want you to, to report. This week, I want you to practice reporting. I want saying, I'm here. No AWOL today, Lord. I'm reporting. As long as I know it's you, I'm joining you. I'm going to serve you in my enemy's life. I'm going to serve you at work. I'm going to serve you in my home. And if you want to lay a ministry on me, I'm going to sign up for that ministry. As long as I know it's you, the answer is yes today. Where we started this, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Today, I will report for duty, okay? Now, I want to share with you there's a need in the children's department, as there always is in all churches. What we don't have a need for is people who will love the children that are there. We have them. The problem is we have some because of work and because they're moving that we're losing people because of that. And so we are going to have some vacancies come up. We already do. On Thursday nights with Team Kid and on Sunday mornings. If God's speaking to your heart and saying, this is where I want you to serve, then I want you to not tell him no. I want you to tell him yes, and I want you to put a C on your, on your card, and I will get with you, or somebody will get with you this week to help you see how you can begin serving God here at Grace in the children's ministry. But if you have another ministry that 
or something else that God is telling you that you need to use your gifts in, you can put that on your communication Talk to me. That's what it's for. Communication card. Talk to us. Your pastors want to know how God is moving you, how God wants to use you in this church. But listen to me. Be ready to be equipped. We will teach you to follow Jesus in it. We won't teach you how to do it. You probably can do it better than we would ever be able to do it if you're following Jesus. So we just want to help you make sure that you're following Jesus. And we want to equip you to do that. That's what we do here. We want to help you find Jesus in your ministry. We want to help you follow Jesus in your ministry. Why? Because when you do that, Jesus grows his church. All right? So put down here where you know God wants you to serve. By the time this six weeks is up, I want to go from 20% of the church serving, which is the average in America, I think ours is already probably 30 or 40, to about 70. Because I really believe that what God has to say to us over the next few weeks, he's saying it to us for how he's going to grow us this summer when everybody starts coming out of their house and starts coming back to church. He wants, doesn't want people looking down on people. He wants people ready to serve those people when they walk through this, these doors and ready to love them and help them find Jesus and become followers of Jesus. Is that what you want to be? That's the church I want to be. I know of no other agenda here. If you do, please let us know because we want to move from that back to Jesus. So listen to me. If the, there's, there's, we don't have a person overseeing the children's department right now, but I don't want just anybody doing it. I want the person that God has said, this is the one that's going to work with the adults to help them build a ministry here at Grace for Children that, re, that ministers to not only the children but to their parents, but not only to the ones who are coming, but to the ones that are out there that God's reaching out to. No, remember, he's calling them to Jesus, right? Let's join them out there. But I need somebody who, who's got that calling on their life. And you might not be in this room. It might be somebody you know who's in another church and they're serving in a ministry, but they've already got all the leaders they need and you know that that person could do a great job. Go talk to him and tell him I'm looking for him and I'm praying for him. And this is how you say, well, how do you know? He doesn't even know me. He's praying for the one that God is speaking to, the one that will report for duty, the one that will report to Jesus, the one that will do it every day when they get here, just like they're doing it every day where they are. And the one who is gifted and called to that. You know, if you know someone like that, if you are that person, let me know. Because I'm pretty much it. And all I see is how I'm not doing a very good job. Okay? And so please let me know if you're that person. But again, you can't make up somebody else's mind, can you? You can't tell somebody else what God is saying. They have to know for themselves. Amen? Amen? So really, focus more on what's God asking of me. And Lord, I'm going to report to duty today and every day. And I'm going to give you everything. And I'm going to give you all of me. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this time with your people. Thank you for every heart that's in here. I pray for those who have stopped serving because serving got too hard and too difficult. And I pray that they will come home. And they'll come back. Because home is you, Lord. And home is serving you. Doing what you've called them to do. And they know that. And I want them to know that we don't look down on them for, for not doing anything. And we never will. But we love them. And we want to encourage them to find you and follow you. And Lord, if there's someone who's not even saved yet, I pray that they'll take the physical today. And that just simply come to realize that you truly love them. And that you died for them. Want to be with them that their sin keeps them from being with you, but that, Jesus, you died for their sin. And that they would turn to you right now and say, I want to serve you, Lord. I want to be close to you. I want you. Forget all the other stuff. First and foremost, I want you. And I want to walk with you. And I want to be close to you. Will you forgive me and come into my life? Give me your spirit that I might follow you. And now, if that's anyone who's done that, even as I'm saying it, if they're doing that in their heart, the words aren't, aren't important. It's the heart that matters. That you've just saved them. Because you say that all who call on the name of the Lord, you save. Thank you for saving me when I was nine. But thank you, Lord, for calling me to service when I was 35. And most importantly, thank you for calling me to serve you today. And putting in me not only the will to do it, but the ability to do it. You are an amazing God. And I just thank you that you love me so much that you will include me. And not only in what you're doing, but in who you are. And I think that...